In Totality and Infinity, Emmanuel Levinas says, the absolute refusal to serve another does not guarantee that you do not carry out his will. Uh, what I want to do in this video is examine several other uh, videos. Uh, now, um, in examining these videos, it is not my intention to insult or offend the people that made the videos. It is my intention to participate in the discourse on race, which was started by their videos. I want to concern myself with the philosophic issues that they raise. Uh, the issue that they raise about what children are being taught about the issues of race and racism. Now, my concerns with this video is uh, the uh, implication uh, that the young man does not hesitate to make, that his parents are uh, racists and that they are therefore teaching him to be a racist. Uh, the second concern is that he feels that interracial dating and interracial children are a means of ending or stopping racism. Now, I'm not concerned with who he dates or who he has children with. Uh, that's none of my business. What I am concerned with is the fact that he will use his, he may use his personal life, his future, and his happiness as a means of stopping racism. <clears throat> Paul Recoyer, in one of his books, says that the goal is to live the good life in just institutions. And what that means is, is that you have the right to pursue your own happiness, the right to live the type of life that you believe is good. But you also have the duty to, to make sure that the institutions which govern society function justly. What that means is, is that you do not give up your personal life, your future, or your right to happiness in order to address or correct any social problems. What you do is, is you make sure that the institutions that govern society function justly and that they address the social issues. Uh, the next video clip is from another very popular person here on uh, YouTube. Now, the things to watch for in this clip is that the theme is suggested, and I underline the word suggested, by the racist. Also to watch for is uh, the sudden shift in her imagery. She builds up to where she has um, Asian children everywhere and rice patties everywhere, and then Now, just as the theme of the video is suggested by the racist, the rhetorical strategy of the video also gets its meaning from the racist. It is because the racist devalues Natalie and her presence that her continued presence is viewed as a punishment. However, if you refuse to identify with the racist devaluation of her and the race that she comes from, if you refuse to accept the racist's interpretation of the meaning of her presence, then you saw what I saw. A young, talented, beautiful woman saying that she wants to live next door to the racist, that she wants her children to play with his children. She wants her children to grow up and marry his children. Now, that's not a punishment for the crime of racism. What's happening here is that the racist escapes scrutiny, the racist escapes judgment, the racist escapes any and all consequences for his actions, and is actually being rewarded for being a racist. The next video clip consists of a young black female agonizing over racism. Now, the clip is pretty wordy, and I suggest you watch the entire video for yourself. Basically, she asks, why is the racist a racist? She then, in philosophic fa fashion, asks herself, if she were going to be a racist, why would she become a racist? She concludes that if somebody from another race did something fairly terrible to her, that she could see herself hating everyone from that race. 
Then she basically ends her video by pleading her innocence, pleading her innocence that she's never done anything to whites. These three videos all have one thing in common. They all contain young adults grappling with the issues of race and racism all on their own. The problem here is a discourse on race which is designed to protect the racist. Here in America, the discourse on race is designed to do just that. From America's civil rights laws to American movies, television, commercials, and music, the racist American discourse on race is successfully confusing everyone on the issues of race and racism. We can see many of the things which the racist American discourse on race teaches people in the three videos that we just watched. First is the idea that whenever you think of race, you're the racist. The conscious decision to marry a woman or to marry someone of your own race makes you a racist. Second is the idea that the law is powerless to do anything about racism. Therefore, only your love can solve the problem. Only love can conquer hate. But love is not a punishment. No matter why you give it, no matter what you were thinking when you gave it, your love is a reward. Love rewards. Hence, the idea that only love can conquer hate essentially teaches you to reward the racist for being racist. <clears throat> Almost 50 years ago, Emmanuel Levinas said that first philosophy is ethics, not ontology, and not existentialism. Levinas said that in the ethical relation with the other, the other calls my freedom into question. We must consider our own face. We must consider the face that we present in the face of racism. What do the means and methods that we employ to stop racism say about us? Using sex, the penis or the vagina, to end racism by absorbing other races into our own is an attempt to assimilate them. It is unjust and it is unethical. Using your love or using your friendship as a means of stopping racism is equally unethical and unjust. It is manipulation and deception. Using positive images or songs and the like is also unethical and unjust. It's brainwashing. The racist should not be subjected to brainwashing. The idea that a black president, by virtue of being black, alters the consciousness of either the racists or blacks is also unethical and unjust. It's brainwashing. Let no man convince you that we need to end racism by any means necessary because many of the means at our disposal are unjust and unethical. We need to consider the face that we present in the face of racism. There is only one solution to the problem of racism, and that is the law. Do not allow the racist to confuse you into believing that the law is powerless in the face of racism. Do not allow the racist to confuse you into giving up your faith in the law. There is only one solution to the problem of racism, and that is the law. If we are still grappling and struggling with the problem of racism, it is because the law is not doing enough. It is not because you are personally failing. It is because the law is not doing enough.